Let's take a trip back to August 13th, 2009, on the update that single-handedly changed TF2 for good. The Classless update. One of the best updates of all time for the simple reason that it gave us hats and introduced King of the Hill as a game mode into TF2. It reintroduced Sawmill and Nucleus into the good game mode and also was the introduction to one of the best maps to ever exist in the TF2, Goth Viaduct. Viaduct got into the comp map roster pretty damn fast. UGC Highlander started using the maps in Season 3, ESCA in Season 5 of 6s, and ETF2 was in Season 1 of Highlander. It was fast-paced in every format and every class had its opportunity to sign. However, there were a few key problems with Viaduct. Let's get the elephant out of the room first. The FPS problems that Viaduct had for some reason. Since Viaduct was the first snow map to be introduced into TF2, there was a common myth that the snow texture on the ground actually reduced your FPS, which seemed to be true with the addition of either snow maps as well, but it turns out it was completely wrong. You see, Viaduct also came with the weather effect for snow, and that was the problem. The weather effect, not the texture. This myth became so widespread that pretty much any pro version of a map with snow absolutely had to replace the snow texture to quote-unquote maximize FPS. But as funny as this is, this wasn't the main problem with Viaduct. Now, I didn't play Comp TF2 back in that time, but I can make an educated guess after seeing how Viaduct performed on the recent No Restriction 6s, as well as my own experience with product. The main problem with Viaduct from what I could gather was, well, two certain classes, those being Sniper and Demo. Now you might be thinking, since pretty much every fight happens in close range in Viaduct, Shouldn't Scout and Heavy be better? You see, the way that the map is designed, Demos projectiles can arc to pretty much anywhere he wants, so long as he knows how to aim pipes or sticks. Which combined by the fact that there aren't any flank rats to punish a demo that is overextending, as well as the fact that all of this was before the sticky bomb nerf, demo was crazy on this map. And as for the aforementioned Scout and Heavy, well, you have to realize that they were way weaker versions of today's Scout and Heavy. Keep in mind that Scouts couldn't really take advantage of their speed with a Medic since Medics couldn't follow them, and also as mentioned before, there were no flank routes to take, meaning that you had to dance all over the demo to even get to him. At which point, a teammate of his with a hitscan weapon would just deal with you. And as for Heavy, well, this was before the Gru or the Foss even were a thing, meaning that there was actually no way to defend yourself from spam. And sure, the map might allow for great positions for Heavy, but it doesn't matter if a demo just brainlessly spams you for all eternity. And as for Sniper, I don't think I need to go over why he was so good in Viaduct. Well, long range, lots of sightlines, good positions to stand on, covering almost all of them, unpredictable, no flank rats to harass him. So, how did product improve on Viaduct, and also what makes product a competitive masterpiece? First things first, what are the differences between product and Viaduct? The main change from the two maps is the addition of the connector. The connector allows for flanking classes to finally have a route to get behind you, although they would have to deal with their flank first in order to do so. While Demo and Sniper are still the most powerful classes on the map, that doesn't mean that they are unstoppable in any way, shape or form. The connector on its own made the map flow so much better when it comes to this regard, but there were also other great additions, like the ammo pack next to the point that basically gives spies an additional good route to take, the removal of cover on China and bridge, making snipers more exposed to being seen, meaning that flank classes as well as your sniper can know for sure where the sniper is and how to counter him. And as for demo, while the multiple balance changes have kept him in check, in every game mode, for product in particular, the connector made it so much easier to get to him without contesting him head on. Product is also one of the only map in the game that encourages crits over stock. There is no other map in the game that does this. People try to make crits work just like it does in product, but it mostly turns into cringe instead of crits. Also, it's one of very few maps in which multiple holds are viable. There is no other map that allows you to forward hold in such a way 
as well as have two very viable holes behind the point, one being behind rock and the other our pocket, as well as great choices to actually push to the point. Now let's talk formats. Product in Highlander has so many ways to be played and mastered that I would be sitting here for hours talking about the numerous stuff that you can do. You can run level 3s. I've seen Pyro sack with a jetpack. Every time that you're not sure what map to play on a scrim, you would either say Product or Upward. In Prolander, Product plays very close to its Highlander counterpart, only with a few twists. Instead of a Spy or a Pyro, you can run an NG to provide your combo with additional heals and ammo. Instead of an NG or a Pyro, you can run a Spy if their sniper is getting out of hand. But for the most part, Prolander plays similarly to Highlander when it comes to Product. Now, Sixes is the interesting one. You see, Product is the only Sixes map that allows certain off-classes, those being Heavy and Sniper, to be run often, sometimes even full-time, and sometimes even together. We talked about Sniper before, but Heavy is super powerful for holding the point and denying jumpers way better than any scout could. He could even deny both soldiers sacking while staying alive if he has overheal on the rock. In response to a full-time Heavy or Sniper would be a one-time Sniper or a one-time Spy, since both of these options would discourage these classes from being run. Another strat would be running NG to deny jumpers if you're not good at Heavy, while also providing your team with extra heals and ammo, as well as half of a Scout or Pyro as a response to crits or whatever the fuck this was. They are going to start playing the point. They do have the better scores. Oh, God, 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 absolutely God. smacks these Punch them with the 3k. Unlike other 6s maps, this is all coming at the cost of a soldier, who is normally not as important on product simply because of how powerful hitscan classes are on it and how easily he can get denied. Scouts are important though, so you will usually see teams still run two scouts with the additional off classes. Of course, everything depends on the situation, but it's still possible to run them full time. Now, I'm not telling you to go to TF2 Center and play Pyro on Six's product lobbies as the good Pyro main you are, just because a big dick comp heavy boy told you so, but if your team is screaming on product, you probably need to find your off class. A lot of people might lead you to believe that Koth is some sort of savior for the Six's men, but sadly these people are mistaking the Koth game mode with just product. Sure, there are cost maps like Warm Deck that allow more diverse type of team compositions. As I know this from Prolander. But for every Warm Deck, there is a Lakeside, which I still believe to this day would be honestly fine for Sixes. Just add a sniper and then just have the meta normally. Product allows for off classes while not forcing a new meta and rewards experimentation in every format it's played in. While Product is one of the best maps to learn and master, it is also the most accessible map by newer players. Even if you are completely new to comp, Product doesn't punish you for it. The map is pure DM at its best, and it's the best kind of it. Unlike other cost maps like the aforementioned Lakeside that basically force you to play in a certain way, Product allows for more interesting fights and overall engagements to the point that it's still getting updated after all these years. These have been my thoughts on the subject, I would like to hear yours now. Do you agree? Is product a masterpiece? Or is it just overrated? Anyways, this has been Hamon, signing off.